What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another War Thunder video. Today we're taking a look at the vaunted IS-7. This is quite the tank. It's got a lot of hype, but it's not quite as powerful as some people say. Before we get into the gameplay, I want to take a minute to very briefly look at the, I at the armor on the IS-7 and talk about some advice for some players who are acquiring the IS-7. First of all, let's take a look at the armor. Just a cursory look at the armor. It looks really, it looks really angular. Got a nice rounded turret. It's and it, it's very resilient. But you do not want to angle it. That is something that people make too many mistakes with. The IS-7 is not like most tanks. It's more like the IS-3 in that it's got that pike nose. This is actually a perfectly angled front. You do not want to be angling like it like this. This is not like driving a Tiger where you want to create a diamond shaped pattern between you and your opponent. So let's go ahead and take a look at the protection analysis that uh, War Thunder has. Let's take a look at say the German Leopard and we use the Hida facet as an example. This is something you're going to encounter a lot in the IS-7. So IS-7 against the Leopard, the Hida facet will very easily pen the low from plate, even just a little bit lower here. Up top, not so much. Over to the side, not so much again. You're looking over between 300 and 350 millimeters of, of armor because of how well it's angled. However, let's see you come around a corner, around a building. There's a leopard on the other side. And very, very easily, the armor is not so effective. It's under 300 millimeters of pen most in most of these locations. Same on the other side, because it's basically a symmetrical tank in that sense. So, you want to drive head-on as much as possible. The turret is pretty easy to pen uh, with HEATFS and APDS, APFSDS, all the more modern shells. But the, the hull itself is, is pretty strong against, uh, against HEATFS. But as soon as you angle it, you're dead. So keep that in mind when you're driving it. Also, let's take a look at the modifications very briefly. This is not a premium tank. You may have taken a lot of time or spent a lot of money on your IS-7, but it is not a premium tank. It does not come with premium rewards, and it does not come with all of your parts. So you have to research these just like a regular tank in your tech tree. Now, I purchased parts, fire protection, and horizontal drive when Gaijin gave me a three-day test drive. If I were to do this all over again, I would only buy parts. I only used fire protection once in the first I think, dozen battles. And I would just grind everything else. Parts is, is important because of the fact that most people, they either don't have the correct shell, they don't have a gun capable of penetrating you regardless of the shell, or they just don't know how to pen your, your armor because they aren't familiar enough with the IS-7. So what they will do is they will just simply take a shot at your gun barrel and take it out. When you're a minute into the battle and you've got no no gun barrel, you're screwed. So, do yourself a favor, spend 220 gold, and buy parts. That's what I would do. As far as the gun, you don't have any additional shell options. You just get the big APCBC shell and heat, or excuse me, high explosive. Uh, there's no APDS, there's APFSDS, not, nothing like that. Just a, it's just a pretty basic, old school, a heavy tank from the Russians or Soviets. Uh, smoke grenades, but no smoke launchers. Let's go ahead and get into the game. This was either my first or second game with the IS-7. I raced over and capped B with my team. Came over here towards the midsection with the intent of pushing Charlie. But over in the distance, I'm, I'm noticing some tanks. First is this M103, which I way overshot. Use the rangefinder, bounce his incoming shot. 600 meters, pretty sh short distance. And any doubts as to whether or not this is a good gun, that, that should clear it up right there. M103, frontal, frontal shot, easy, easy. And you notice the reload on the IS-7 is remarkably quick. There's a tank in the background there, I don't know if you noticed that. A Chieftain Mark III, all the way in the back, and he's looking to snipe someone 
coming from our spawn. So I, have, I want to eliminate him as soon as I can. It's in excess of 1,200 meters, so it's going to be quite a shot. And yeah, he's dead. <laughs> the IS-7's gun is no joke. The reload is absolutely amazing at 10 seconds. It has a, a, an auto loader, which means regardless of your crew level training, uh, it's it's a flat 10 seconds, which is enormously helpful. Not too long ago, I was playing the T10M uh, quite a bit and trying to get some footage for the for the uh, for the channel. And one of the most frustrating things about that is the lack of of an auto loader. The the, the reload on that is just unbearable. It's it's uncompetitive at times, but with a flat 10 second reload, the IS-7 is very competitive. Nothing down that way. Don't see anything there. Or there. It's gotta be something. Hello. Uh-oh. M103. Turn, 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 turn. Oh, that could have been bad, because we had we had our side exposed there. That that could have been very bad. Anybody else coming in this way? They do have Alpha, obviously, so they could push some more people over here. It's actually the obvious place for people to come from is, is this direction. I throw the spawn is to the back left. The cap is directly ahead of us to our left. Alright, no one's there, so let's just push on uh, and uh, check out the other end of the, of the city. So, as far as the question of whether or not the IS-7 grind is worth it, or what the value of the IS-7 really is in terms of, of money on the, uh, on the Gaijin market, I think it all comes down to personal uh, feelings about it, because most other vehicles don't require this amount of time or money to acquire. And how much free time and money you have is is going to... You know, that's a very personal thing. Um, I spent a little bit of money on my IS-7. Uh, that's because of my, my back. It, it, it will not allow me to sit for, for very long. So I can't I can't sit here and grind all day like some people can. Now, if your expectations for the IS-7 are... Like that of the IS-6, and that it's an overpowered tank with training wheels that you can just drive in and just kill everything in sight. You're going to be in for a rude awakening, because while the armor is very good, the gun is very good, the reload is great, it's all around a very good tank. It is by no means an easy mode tank like the IS-6 was when it was introduced. The IS-6 was under-tiered, its armor on the, on the hull was, was incorrect. The turret armor was unbelievably bad. It was poorly implemented. It was something like twice the armor it should have been. I mean, it was just it was just bad. It was completely unbalanced. And no matter what Gaijin does to the IS-6, or has done to the IS-6, they will never lose that moniker of being overpowered and broken. Even though it's today, it's very balanced. It will always be a pay-to-win tank. It will, it will never be able to shake that that stigma, and I don't think the IS-7 will either because it's you can you can buy it. So for that reason, it's a it's a it's a really good tank that you can buy outright. So people will automatically assume that it's pay to win, and I don't think it's enormously pay to win. Not like the IS-6 was when it was introduced. I know there's a tank up here in front of me in this in these trees. I don't want to push up because I don't know how many are there. I'll just be patient and let them push me. I did see a tank move to the left, so I figured he was going to come this way. I don't know if it's the same vehicle or not, but he ends up coming around the right side instead. I try to straighten my whole armor towards him, and he bounces and dead. M47, it's got really good heat. Heat FS, actually. But he aimed for the hull, I believe, and bounced because I, I, I tried to get myself as straight on with him as possible. Because if you remember at the very beginning of the video, we talked about how 
the weak spots are much smaller on the hull when you're straight on versus at an angle. It's very important to keep that in mind when you're facing a tank like the M47. And it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good tactic to use against any vehicle because sometimes it's not always clear what it is. The Poland match would end with uh, one additional kill on a, an SPA. I killed a Falcon with my machine gun, but that was it was a pretty long wait for for just a one kill. In our second battle, we are on Middle East. Just took out an RU251, which I had uh, noticed he was on the mini map. You see, he had pushed too far and was marked on the mini map uh, because he got too far or too close to the spawn. Pushing up through towards Bravo, where some tracers came in from the airplane. But we've got Alpha pretty well secured, so I'm not worried about my right. But directly in front of me, I know there are vehicles, as Bravo was just capped. So there's got to be something up here. And just just then, I see a, a JPZ-45 coming, coming down the road. I assume that he's going to go ro uh, left past that building right there. But no dice. He must have put on the brakes and when he saw me. Tries backing up. That just isn't going to work, my friend. <laughs> the JPC is pretty quick in the reverse, but it's not quite quick enough. As I push up towards Bravo, you see my, my inexperience with this map shows that I, I don't play this map enough to, to remember that these aren't uh, uh, destructible. Leopard drives, drives off right in front of me. That's an easy kill. Side shot. Leopards are probably the easiest vehicle to kill with the with the IS-7 uh, frontally or or on a nice side shot like that. I see a lot of leopards so far in my I believe I've played 12 games. Approximately two thirds of my matches have been against Germans, with leopards being the predominant uh, opponent because of how popular the leopard is. It's kind of like the king tiger is and, and the tiger one at, at those respective tiers. Just at 7.7, .7, everyone plays the Leopard. The okay, trying to get some other vehicles in there, but it's it's predominantly the Leopard. So I'm trying to find another enemy when I have artillery drop on me, and now I see off to my left, it's just a little bit of a hint of a tank. It's an RU-251. So small, covered in bushes. He reminded me of the chipmunk that I have out in the front yard. Just really even saw him. Push up after him. All I'm seeing is natural looking bushes and trees. I don't see anything that looks like a tank. Where did this little guy go? <laughs> did he flank her on the left? Where did this guy go? RU251 is really fast. Really light. Couldn't have gone too far. Someone would have seen him, you would think. Let's push her on the backside and see if we can find him. Aha! There he is! I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> that was a nice little ambush he tried to pull off. It could have ended very differently. But speaking of ending, this is the last match for today. We are on Maginot Line. I put a couple of bushes on my tank just to help mask the, the turret ring. You see, the, the tank does struggle a little bit right now because I, I don't have the upgrades to the engine and transmission and filters. But still, for a, a stock tank, a big, heavy, Soviet heavy tank, it still powers its way up here pretty well. Over to my left, I see a sur base. But I get hit by the from something on the right. It's a heat shell from an AMX-30. And the only damage he did was he yellowed my track. <laughs> I wish I knew where he shot, because if he aimed at the lower front plate, I think he would have been able to pin me. Took down the sur base, so there were my my hopes of getting the sur base. That's, that was the whole reason for going this way, is to flank the sur base and then push up towards the AMX-30. Where are you, buddy? There you are. I can push him, but I don't have the gun depression. I just can't get my gun low enough. It just won't quite settle. As I get closer, he, he retreats wisely. 
and he uses that little bit of ground that he's got in between he and I as a as a barrier. He and his he and his allies are working on, on my on my guys at Bravo. Put down another guy. I'm hustling as fast as I can because I know he's in the middle of re reload. If I can shoot first, I got him. Fired again. Come on, tank, move, move, move. Let's turn this turret. And whew, that was close. AMX-30 is a nice tank. It's it's one of my favorite French tanks. Uh, its armor is pretty weak, but its gun is really good. His best bet would have actually been to move, if at all possible, and hide in, in amongst these these buildings. Now we got rockets flying at us. Bravo to secure the cap, but I'm not alone. Someone else is on Bravo. I hear something behind me, but there, there are also airplanes above, and that was a devastating bomb run. Three vehicles just got taken out. There's three T-54s that are down. I know something's behind me. There he is. Centurion Mark 10 is a damn good tank, but in that position, he had no no chance of surviving that. He he was the aggressor. I stayed I stayed patient and waited for him to come to me. And I had the advantage because I could hear his engine coming. If you're ever in a situation like that, just 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 chill. There's no reason to to rush anything. Now, of course, we got the the the, the ever popular question: What to do next? Do we go for Alpha? Get greedy? Because we only need two caps to, to win a victory, or do we just kind of hang out here and hold B? See a tank being marked over here to the right, to the south of Alpha. It looked like a medium tank, so I'm going to go in that area or in that direction and and try to intercept whatever's there. I don't have a whole lot of t a whole lot of help with me, so I need to be. Somewhat careful. If I stay here, I'm kind of hidden with the shadows of the vehicle or the of the building. I occasionally see uh, there we go. I'll occasionally see tanks hold up in amongst those buildings right there and intercept respawners. And in this case, this guy just comes out. He doesn't give a damn. <laughs> I think he kind of accepted his fate and just said screw it. That's okay though. Onward to Alpha. This is where the IS-7 is the most vulnerable. Here you have this great big heavy Soviet tank crossing this great big expanse with the side armor showing. And side, side engagements against the IS-7 are pretty easy. It's just like engaging IS-3, IS-4 and so on. Just shoot him just below that, that track, and you'll often detonate the MRAC rack or kill enough crew members to uh, to to take out the tank. It's really not that much different. And again, even though I'm I'm stuck in terms of the engine performance, this is this is still able to move quite 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 rapidly across this field. Don't do it. Woo! <laughs> that guy wanted to be dead. <laughs> That's a damn good thing I'm not faster than I am. If I had engine upgrades, would I have survived that? I'm not so sure I would have. Still no signs of any, any, any enemies other than the airplane. And there's going to be another airplane up before too long. And of course they're on Charlie. As my team is kind of spreading out across the map. They're not huddled into one area anymore, and that's somewhat problematic because it, it leaves no one on a particular cap. They're kind of spread out with no no really no no real strengths. In a situation like this, I like to get over here on this on this hill here. And let them funnel in behind me. Because odds are they're going to try to come in between 
in between that house to my left there and this this hill that I'm right next to. Very rarely do I get flanked from my right. Airplane up. Our second capture of the game. I know someone's gotta be coming at some point, right? <laughs> you just know, when you see this, you just know that they're coming for you, right? I do have some machine guns, so I use them to spray at him just to ward him off. That also gives away my position to any... any any uh, enemy tanks on on the ground here? And someone is close enough to drop artillery, and I do see some movement coming. So he's laying wait and ambushing. AMXM4 goes down. That was the guy who was in the narwhal that tried to suicide bomb me, <laughs> and I just got shot in the ass by someone else I didn't see. Shoot this guy, and he goes down. But so do I. And the AMX-30 that was behind me. <laughs> I give the guy a little a little hard time in chat. Because he's he's from Jengar's squadron, so I, I just gotta poke him a little bit. But that, that guy, by, by team killing the AMX-30, he cost them any chance of winning this match. Because if the AMX-30 had not been killed, he would have been on A to cap it. While I'm respawning, I would have given them two caps and control. And the tickets would have started bleeding even more towards, even more in their favor. Sure, we have two guys that are headed in, in their direction, but AMX 30 is a very good tank and it could have easily uh, defended itself against those two vehicles. That team kill, that, that is a very costly team kill. Obviously, accidental. I'm not, I'm not alleging anything intentional, but. It was absolutely hilarious to me at the time, and uh, yeah, I respawned here. All I got was a hit on an aircraft, and uh, we ended up winning the game. So the, the IS-7, in a nutshell, it's it's a damn good tank. It's uh, whether or not it's it's worth grinding or buying, I think is a it's a very personal decision. If I were you, I would not spend too much money on it if you you know if you don't have the time you don't have the time I mean it is what it is right but if, if you I would not spend a whole lot of money it's it's a single tank remember that it's one tank you might you might be better off uh, saving up your money and buying multiple tanks in as part of a, a bundle and of course let's not forget that fall is coming and that's when the uh, the War Thunder anniversary sale happens so you never know what kind of special deals Gaijin is going to, going to offer the community. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. The IS-7 is a damn good tank, but it's not overpowered by any means. It's it's remarkably well balanced, especially when you compare it to when the IS-6 was introduced. And the game is definitely going to benefit from it because if we had gotten another IS-6 with the introduction of the IS-7, it would have been a mess for this game. Thankfully, that's not going to happen. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that thumbs up button. And, of course, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Take care, guys.